Hello, today's video is gonna be all about the Manhattan. This is an absolute go-to, and it has been for many people for many decades. It is versatile, timeless, and it is extremely tasty. One of the earliest known recipes for a Manhattan, dating back to the late 19th century, calls for maraschino, absinthe, orange bitters, sugar syrup and a lemon zest, which may be a delicious drink, but that's not what you'd expect if you ordered a Manhattan in a bar today. But we're not gonna focus on the history. I'm gonna guide you through how to make the three recognized Manhattans, including common mistakes, pitfalls, and understanding the basics of playing around with vermouth when using an aged spirit. So we're gonna need Angostura bitters, rye whiskey, sweet vermouth, dry vermouth, an orange, and some cherries. I've made a nice big block of ice. That. It's gonna be too big for our stir, so I'm just gonna chop it up. Still too big. Okay, so that was a disaster. The ice is all over the floor. But, look at this, wonderful. And we go. So first things first, this is a stirred drink so that we can control the dilution. So let's get everything nice and cold before we start adding any of the ingredients. So the three Manhattans are sweet, dry, and perfect. They all have a large measure of rye whiskey and a couple of dashes of Angostura bitters. The dry Manhattan has the addition of dry vermouth and an orange zest for the garnish. A sweet Manhattan has the addition of sweet vermouth and cherry for the garnish. The perfect Manhattan, of course, has both sweet and dry vermouths and both orange zest and cherry for the garnish. Quick note on the perfect Manhattan, if you're adding both vermouths, then you want to add half the volume of each vermouth to keep the ratio of whiskey to vermouth where you want it. To my ratio that I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using six parts whiskey to two parts vermouth. 60 mils of whiskey, 20 mils of vermouth. My suggestion to you would be to play around. Eight parts whiskey to two parts vermouth, or six parts whiskey to three parts vermouth. Hugely different drinks there, but both still very much a Manhattan. So have a little play around and see what you think. This is all about personal preference, so don't let anybody tell you you're not making it properly. Now everything is nice and cold. I've filled it with as much ice as I can, which brings the average temperature down. If you're confused by that, then go back and watch my martini video, link coming up here. Okay, so no, no dilution left in there. So now we're ready to start adding our ingredients. First things first, Angostura bitters. We put that in first, a couple of dashes, not too much, otherwise it's just gonna sit on the ice there on the top. In with my next smallest ingredient, I'm gonna pick some sweet vermouth here and I'm just gonna add a tiny drop, barely any. Now, I'm gonna add a slightly larger amount of the dry vermouth. So as you can tell, I'm making a perfect Manhattan. I've gone for a slightly higher percentage of the dry vermouth because that's how I like it for breakfast. And now I'm gonna throw in my large measure of my rye whiskey. I'm not a purist, use whatever you like. Go for it, rum, brandy, mezcal. But when it comes to guest expectations, use a rye whiskey. Rye whiskey's not as sweet. Let's take a brief intermission whilst I take a delivery and I rather excitedly also turn on a light. Idiot. Yeah, so rye whiskey is spicier than lots of other whiskies. It's got more of a backbone and a bit more heat to it, which is exactly what we want for a drink like this. So as I start stirring, there are two major things going on here. The temperature's going down and the dilution is going up. How do we know when it's gonna be ready? Taste, taste, taste. It's intense, it's warm. You're gonna need a fair amount of stirring to get this under control. Like white light. Now go with me here. The most pretentious analogy in the world, but go with me. We want to take our white light and shine it through a prism so that we can see all those beautiful colors of the rainbow and color. And that is what dilution is gonna be bringing to the party. It's the water that's being added to it. It's just thinning it out so that we can actually dissect it. We put neat, warm alcohol into our mouths and our taste receptors just go alcohol. And that's important because it's our body's way of saying, whoa, poison, alcohol, poison. And we're like, yeah, we know what we're doing. Thanks, everything in moderation. But what we want to do is to actually calm down the alcohol receptors so that we can actually access much more of the detail that's going on within this wonderfully made 
made liquid. As we're stirring it, the dilution is going up, but at the same time, the temperature is going down, 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 which is also making it a bit easier for our palate. However, if we stir this for too long, of course, it's gonna end up nice and cold, but it's gonna also be really, really high on the dilution, so it's gonna be too watery. And so in terms of our light analogy, yeah, it'll be really easy to see all of the different colors, but they'll be thin and pale, and we won't get the full intensity. So we don't want it to be too watery. We don't want to stir it for too long. We're just gonna have another taste. I've been talking for way too long, it's way too watery, it's nice and cold as you can see from the condensation on the outside, but that is really watery, that's a ruined Manhattan. So tip number one, don't talk for too long. Hmm. So when you're satisfied with your drink, we're going to strain it off into a nice chilled cocktail glass. Beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. So now we just have to garnish it up. Perfect. So we're going to go for a bit of an orange and a bit of a cherry as well. Potato peeler down the length of the orange. We're going to give it a little twist over the top to extract some of those oils from the zest. And the oil is just going to land on the top of the drink. The twist itself should hold its shape nicely. And then that can just balance on the side of the glass. And we're going to take a cherry and a nice sweet little treat for after we finish the drink. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make the perfect Manhattan. Cheers. So in summary, choose a high quality rye whiskey or experiment with your favorite spirit. Don't overpower your favorite spirit with too much vermouth or too much bitters and taste, taste, taste so that you don't over dilute it like I have. Have fun. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I love it when you write a comment for me and I do try and get back to everyone. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. See you next week. Bye.